What's up, you guys? Welcome to Critique the Critics, the show where we make fun of movie critics. Today, we are looking at Pet Cemetery, the newest 2019 remake or reboot of the film, the Stephen King horror. Uh, we're going to read this review, pick it apart, and just generally make fun of it because uh, critics don't know what they're talking about. Let's be honest. Now before we get started, if it's your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell right next to it. That way you can get notified every single time we have a new video out. Now let's take a look at this review of Pet Cemetery. The truth is, this Pet Cemetery redo is rather substandard, and in that way that horror remakes tend to be. Adding on lots of gloss and creepy imagery through extra dim cinematography, while losing the heart of what makes the original, in this case really the book, sing with its proponents of so many decades. That's not fair. You can't compare Compare it to the book immediately? That's not fair! You're jumping past the original movie and going to the book? That is so not fair. Oh man! Especially when adaptations of books have to do completely different things just so that they'll work on screen, so it's already not fair comparing it to the book. But you're going past the original one and going to the book. That's like when you don't talk to the person who's just above you and you talk to like the owner and you just like jump up the chain instead and then now you have like an assistant manager and a manager and a shift leader all pissed at you at the same time because you didn't talk to the right person in the first place and they're all getting yelled at and reamed out just because of your stupid dumbass opening your mouth. That's happened to you. That's before. definitely happened to me before. <laughs> <laughs> Even worse, it's also incredibly dull. A kiss of death where horror is concerned. A kiss of death where horror is concerned. Not only is that just a nonsense statement, but I hate the fact that you made like a horror sentence. Also, I feel like being dull is the kiss of death in anything. Literally anything. If something is dull, I guess except for Indian food. Like the actual colors that you see in Indian food are kind of dull. The flavor and the aroma, not dull. It's like the only cuisine that is beige food. Food. As with every second take on a horror property, the bones are basically there, and there's quite a bit of thematic material that filmmakers Kevin Kolsch and Dennis Widmer could have really dug into. Why is that ground sour anyway? Yeah, they could have explained that thing that wasn't explained in the original either. Who cares? It's not explained. In fact, explaining it would have, been, would have been kind of annoying. We would have been like, oh sure, the remake just had to explain everything to us. And that's what you would have been complaining about. You would have been like, oh, that's a bit on the nose. Way to wink, wink, wink at the camera about the sour sh**. <laughs> sour sh**. Yeah. After that Indian food. <laughs> Granted, King didn't really provide those answers either. Oh, wait, you jumped all the way back to the book, but you forgot to jump all the way back to the book for this moment. But his was a story that ruminated more and identified with a clearer perspective that drives the decisions that send Lewis to make what to many would be an unspeakable choice. So, so wait, because his book had a better like tone and perspective, he didn't have to explain the sour ground. But because this movie is dull and dark and not done with the same kind of perspective and intention, really needs to explain that sour ground. I read that, right? That's what you said? Because that's really stupid. Because I don't understand how that would have saved it. So the book didn't explain the sour ground, the original movie didn't explain the sour ground, and you're basically saying, hey, I know it's not in any of the source material, but I would really appreciate it if you'd just make some sh** up. Really all Kolsch and Widmere seem interested in are cheap jump scares and zombies. That's not true, actually, because th th there weren't that many jump scares. There was a surprising lack of jump scares in it. In fact, for the most part, it was like, creaked out scary tone. The jump scares happen, don't get me wrong, but it's not like a movie that completely relied on it where every two seconds you get jump scare, jump scare, jump scare. And there was a ton of build and tension before jump scares happen, so that's just kind of wrong. And either of those would be fine, though disappointing. I can get down with the Zack Snyder Dawn of the Dead after all. Well. <laughs> I hate that, where it's like, <laughs> where it's basically like, listen, it's okay if there's like a campiness to it. Here, let me reference this movie that's campy that I also enjoy. Aren't I like credible now? It's like, it's like when old people are like, what are the kids saying these days? Woke? <laughs> now that I've, uh, it's like you showed up to a school to talk about sex and you're doing some presentation. It's like, hey kids, listen to me try and say things about Fortnite so that you think I'm cool and hip and then I'm going to tell you about how you should wear a condom. If you strip a thought 
awful piece of horror down to its barest concept, but can still make a cracker of a picture out of it, that's fine. This is not that. Instead, the filmmakers turn King's words into a rote and hollow experience, with every climb through the mountain of sticks in the cemetery and each flashback to Rachel's past, I felt myself slowly growing older and, well, you sound older. You certainly sound older. Like, oh, this isn't as good as the book. In fact, the movie before, before this movie was as good as the book. We need all these explanations because the book doesn't even explain it, but as long as, as long as we get explanations in the movie, then it can somehow hold a candle to the book. I mean, come on. You sound ancient. You sound like, whatever happened to back in the day when people told stories with words on paper? <laughs> it's like, just because they redid it doesn't mean they did it wrong. In fact, if we're talking about like the bare bones story, both the book, the movie prior to this, and this movie, tell the bare bones story. That story gets told. And, and it's just whether or not you like how it's told. Once Pet Cemetery turns into a near action horror spectacle in its final 20 minutes, it pretty much feels like a final insult rather than an earned denouement. An insult? An insult to what? To the original or the book? To him? To you? I don't even know what you're mad about. Like, you, like, it, are you mad about it not being as good as the original? Because it's like almost the same thing, just modernized. Are you mad about it not being as good as the book? Are you mad about like it not scaring you or not being what you thought? I don't, I don't know what you're upset about. That's part of the. That's honestly part of my confusion reading your review. The thing that didn't spell everything out is the thing that you revere, but this movie should have spelled everything out. This thing didn't tell the story the way it should have been, even though it told the story exactly the same as the story before it. It just doesn't make any sense. The tragedy that befalls these characters, which should resonate in a near EC-like fashion, instead is just a shrug-worthy brushing off so the whole thing can just end. Yeah, it definitely felt like, eh, let's just get to the finish. That's, yeah, that's what the culmination of this movie felt like. I'm gonna be honest, if that's what the culmination of this movie felt like to you, I have a good therapist that, that I would like to suggest. Because you shouldn't be shrugging off what happens in the third act of this movie. You shouldn't be like, meh, whatever. No. No human being should be able to shrug that off. I'm sorry. I don't care if you're f***ing Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> you shouldn't be shrugging that off. Really, the pacing here is so wonky. It's like the kid who walks most of the mile they're supposed to run in gym class, but then sprints in the last 50 feet. What's even the point? So it looks like you ran. I will say this, it's not the best analogy because uh, the whole time we're watching, it's not like someone's staring at this kid the whole time they're walking and then he runs and, and we're still supposed to be convinced that he ran. In this, we're watching the entire movie and then the running happens. So like there is some sort of build, like there has to be. Otherwise we would have been like, hey, this movie was walking the whole time. You would have left. You would have left the movie if this is really the pacing that happened. They're not even scared. Scary zombies. <laughs> okay. First off, you're treating this like it's just just a straight ahead zombie movie, and that's not what this is. But also a huge difference between this and zombie movies is zombie movies like Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, etc. Those movies aren't about zombies. Those movies are about people dealing with zombies. It's not about the zombies. In Night of the Living Dead, you have people, you have race relations, and how they are going to react to a zombie epidemic. It's not about the zombies. It's the same thing with Dawn of the Dead. It's not about zombies. It's about consumerism, and it's about how we react to a zombie epidemic and race relations and social classes, etc. It's not about the zombies. This situation is different because it's actually about dealing with life and death. So the zombies that you're calling them in this are people and animals that we have an actual connection to and we can relate to specifically because it's our understanding of our own mortality and how we deal with loss. That's it. So it's not even fair to call this a zombie movie for two reasons. One is you're thinking of zombie movies as just, oh no, zombies, which is completely wrong. And, and then the other reason is that the really good zombie movies that deal with people and how they relate in the midst of something as psychotic as a zombie epidemic is also different from what's going on here. So you're wrong on two counts. I'm sure there's more, but we have to move on.
<laughs> also, to really nail how discombobulated all of this is, Rachel's subplot regarding her sister's accidental death, while literally pulled from the book at the outside, takes a larger centerpiece here. Basically, they create more opportunities for cheap scares. Or they do a thing where they're trying to develop characters and have us have a better understanding as to why people are having difficulty dealing with loss. Did you not hear what I just said? You're not hearing what I said. The problem being, when you try to produce body horror or even underline the idea that Rachel's biggest fear is ending up like her sister, it leaves an awful taste in your mouth. Specifically the usage of physical disability to provoke a reaction of that sort. It's misguided at best and downright offensive at worst. It's not offensive at all, it's a natural thing. It's something that makes us uncomfortable as human beings. Loss, disfigurement, fear, this, this is how we are. That's actually why this story is so brilliant and so well written and smart and why it's being remade in the first place. Because he touched on so many subjects that are uncomfortable for us and scare the living shit out of us and make us do things we wouldn't otherwise do. Everyone in this movie, in the book and the prior movie, do things that you shouldn't do and you wouldn't normally do. But put in a situation where they're scared to death and don't know how to deal they do it. As a character says at one point, sometimes dead is better. Paramount should have heeded that advice. Oh, come on. That's so stupid. I hate the whole like clever closing statement thing that critics love to do. Are you just required to do it? Do your peers not think that you're legitimate unless you do something like that? Is that, is that the thing? It's like, oh, this movie sucked for real. Get it? Because cats have fur. <laughs> Pet cemetery. Like, what do you... Like, it, it's to the point where I bet you're not the only one who said that. There's probably people who said that exact line because it's so freaking obvious. <sighs> That's so frustrating for me. Well, I got a question for you. Did you like Pet Cemetery? Did you see the one before? Did you read the book? Do you think that... All of them are basically just telling the same story because that's what I think. And I don't know how this guy didn't understand that. But uh, but for some reason he did. Let us know what you think down in the comments and what you thought of the movie, the prior movie, the book, everything. We'd love to hear what you have to say. If it's your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell right next to it. Also, we record these shows live on Twitch and there's a link in the description so you can hang out with us. We are live fairly often and we can hang out and chat and do all sorts of fun stuff together. So make sure you check that out. And until we see you next time, geek out and game on.